Yeah, hi, how are you? Hi. to honor Tom Cole's work. First, I'd like to thank the Michigan Council of Friends of Cultural Affairs and the National Endowment for the Arts. Um, their support helps us bring wonderful exhibits like this to the Copper Country, and they help support the um, Community Arts Center um, in our many programs that we offer, which include um, uh, some educational programs that for people of all ages. So, um, I was talking to um, one of Tom's colleagues, and he was an engineer and he said, well, I didn't know Tom was an artist. And frankly, I didn't really know what else you did. <laughs> you seem to have bridged these two lives of yours together. Um, but I, uh, it, I think Tom and I have had maybe like two conversations ever. You know? <laughs> but um, we, when we were hanging the show um, the last couple of days, I learned a lot about different kinds of materials and um, and techniques for making art, and um, but what I realized is not about all those different techniques that he's mastered. It's about his compassion for humanity, which is really touching and really comes through so strongly in your art. So thank you for sharing it with us, and um, we look forward to hearing what you have to, to tell us. <laughs> <laughs> Like this, but like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have a few notes just so that I don't forget what I wanted to share. <clears throat> uh, I'd like to start with a dedication. I'd like to dedicate this exhibit to my best friend Faith <laughs> and also to my parents. Uh, and before I, uh, before I forget it, I also want to acknowledge and thank Cynthia and the Copper Country uh, Art Center for allowing me to, or giving me the opportunity and the space to, to share my images and thoughts. Okay, so I'll, I'll dive into the, uh, the things I want to share that's probably on the surface of the images. Uh, let me start by saying why I chose the word, uh, the title Pigments and Pixels. Well, uh, to be fair, really, uh, there are two, two big source of images here. Uh, if you go down to the basic source or elements, it's the pigments, and it's, it's available through the ink, which is really water-based uh, flowing of pigments, and pastels, where it's not water-based, but nonetheless, it's, it's made of really particles of different colors. And on the other hand, I've also, the, uh, move on towards uh, photography also, 
And in that sense, it may also be pigments at the end, but they, they focus more on picture cells or pixels. But uh, as Cynthia has mentioned, the more I go into the uh, elements, it's not really the elements that matters. Uh, it's, it's really what it allows me to do. And that's where I get my fun, uh, trying, to, trying to express my thoughts. Uh, <clears throat> There are several uh, pieces uh, of Sumi. I still love Sumi because uh, there's a lot of uh, accidents that are available there. And as, in fact, you'll see a lot of uh, imperfections in a lot of the works here. And I actually uh, learned how to actually grab at those imperfections because I was just telling Clyde, in fact, just this afternoon, uh, that those imperfections are actually the things that I cannot repeat. As much as I try hard to, to do it, it's actually what has happened. And I really need to accept what has happened. And that, that frees me from trying to control everything. And it, it's very freeing. Okay. So Sumi still remains to be uh, one of my inspiration. And in fact, some of the pieces here, including the uh, photography ones, I try to get back that uh, minimalist quality of it uh, through a few strokes. If, if possible, to try to use either, either lights or, or pixels to, to still get at that media, the immediacy and the meditation that, that minimalism allows me to do. Um, I think uh, I just want to focus, among the pieces, I want to focus just on the big ones because uh, this is an exhibit that I, I got excited more and more over the days that I knew that I was going to have an exhibit is I saw this big space. I said, instead of just hanging my old pieces there, why don't I create one? Because I'm never going to have another show. So, <laughs> <laughs> this is it. so I'm going to have this space. And once I did that, I said, OK, let's move forward. And uh, can I do something more? And I made these three pieces as well to just, uh, to just take advantage of the opportunity. Because I'm not, I'm not going to be able to show this at all, you know. Our house is full of uh, paintings too, so, <laughs> so I, I just want to focus first uh, and just to show you what's going on in my head. Um, some of it are actually frustrations and maybe just observations of what's happening around the world today. So uh, maybe, I hope it doesn't get too political and uh, it's, it's more of what my, my perception is. The big piece there, as much as uh, Faith called it, the phi. <laughs> it's really, yeah, it looks like phi, but really it's solenoidal, okay? And if you, uh, there are different versions of solenoidal. In physics, solenoidal is uh, kind of the expression of magnetic fields being, uh, I'll go scientific here, <laughs> the magnetic field being perpendicular to the um, electric field. So we're in a, uh, society now built on this energy that's trying to force us to, we, we want more energy to get us more uh, either magnetic field or vice versa. But in, more important to me is actually the mathematics definition of solenoidal. And again, if you allow me to be mathematical here, the words are kind of, in a sense, humorous. Because it says a field is solenoidal if the divergence of that field is zero. And the actual meaning I have here is not mathematical or physics, it's about truth. We now live in a world where we spin all the facts we have and drive what is now what we call truth. And it's become solenoidal. It's, if you diverge from it, you get to suffer from your friends. And, and it's kind of sad. But that's the world we live in now. The world has become very solenoidal. Everybody spins. And the, word, the, the truth just goes whatever direction the spin has, has become. And I, frankly, I'm getting more and more frustrated because I don't know what the truth is anymore. You know, what, what's the news, what's uh, opinion, everything. So that's kind of my expression of that. But also, on the other hand, it's also a way for me to uh, practice uh, how to paint large. <laughs> I had to get, I used my biggest brush that I have available, and now I know that 
that's not big enough. I wanted a bigger brush next time. <laughs> uh, this is the other piece. I also uh, want to explore the current world we live in. Again, also a frustration of mine. Uh, it's the Chinese character for war and the Chinese character for peace. Appear to be quite symmetrical because I stylized it that way. But in between is, I, I called it Kama, and then Faith suggested to me, oh, Kama, in musical notes, Kama, the Kama is called the breath, a pause. And I said, that's exactly what I wanted. Uh, in between war and peace, we breathe a little bit, but actually, taken together, this has become what our world is. These are now our seasons. It's not fall, winter, summer, or fall. It's become peace, war, and a little bit of ceasefire, and then we repeat. Unfortunately, uh, rather than make commentary about it, I, I've learned that's the world we live in. Let's just accept it. <laughs> you know, maybe we'll, we'll be happier that way. Um, and that's just the, the two pieces. The other pieces, I guess, um, uh, I can ex I can answer questions later, or if you want, you know. But they're also all in my thoughts. Uh, like um, I was telling Clyde this afternoon, one of the pieces there of the pastel, the one below, is my version of Yin and Yang, and that is about the uh, Democrats and the Republicans. <laughs> uh, you know, they're they're on opposing forces, but frankly. You know, as uh, many people know, I'm liberal, but I, I do understand that we are we don't have a monopoly of the truth either. We need to accept both sides, and if one is lost, then then we lose one of the spectrum of our life. I mean, we we have to live with each other, and the and some of them are humorous. I think like the the one with the pillar floating. It's like it's all in your mind because really that piece is falling. <laughs> but, but within that microsecond towards its fall, its fall it, that's what we are. We think we're floating. But it's OK. We're all, you know, not to be morbid about it. We're, we're all going to die, but who cares? We're alive. We have to live. You know? And so that's kind of my humorous take on, on life. You know, it depends on your point of view. Because in that microsecond, he is floating. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that's, uh, oh, and the, the two pieces there is kind of the, uh, the two ways, uh, two characters, uh, two personalities are treating the way they think. There's Gerhard Richter trying to push forward to the, um, to the future by, by changing, his, what, exploring different ways of exploring his art based on his history uh, from the time he was uh, an artist from East Germany to the more democratic uh, new day, new age. On the other hand, Einstein is there. He's not visibly pushing anything, but I've been looking at it. It's his walk in the Institute of Advanced Studies. That's a picture that I took. I mean, uh, the, the image I got from a book, which I then painted. And while I'm painting it, I'm saying, uh, he's not Gerhard, but he, in his own way, his quiet way, he's also pushing towards his universal theory of, of the world. So there are myth, many ways that we, we work with our problems and our thoughts. And I like the two uh, contrast between the two of them. And I guess I spoke too much, so <laughs> I'll just end here and then open it up for questions. Thank you also for coming. I forgot. To <laughs> so some of the pieces are um, I, are made on the iPad. Maybe yeah. you could point to which ones those are. One or two, uh, anyway. Yeah, some of the pieces are photography, and some of the pieces are I made from iPad. And I'll share a little bit of secrets. <laughs> <laughs> uh, these two are actually. When I was painting, the ink dried up. But when they dried up, they formed kind of like very interesting uh, shapes. And I just took a photograph, and they're this small. And I just magnified it and changed the color a little bit. And using a brush, changed the shape a little bit to, to become what I want them to be. But this one, 
the three, four of them are all iPad uh, software. You, uh, this I did on a plane. I was waiting for the plane to leave. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I finished it off later on, uh, days, days later. Uh, so it started there. Uh, there those three pieces, uh, the Rothko is also iPad, and the bottom one is uh, also iPad. The middle one is photo photograph. And I was just telling uh, Joyce about the secret there. Uh, it looks like trees, and it, I did see trees, but actually it's just the tears from, uh, you know how there's an, umbrella, uh, there's an umbrella in Princeton, and when the rain fell, it produced from the dirt the marks of a tear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I just saw that pattern. I said, oh, this, these are actually trees. So nature, it's nature's painting with, with their pigments. You know? mm -hmm. So I just took a snapshot of what nature did. They were using the brush. Yes? Can you say something more about your portraits, these beautiful green portraits? Which one? Uh, Einstein and this guy in the corner. Uh, this one, this is an image from a jazz artist. Uh, his name is Walter Davis. He's not not so well known, but the the jacket from the CD showed his face, and I was just stunned at his expression. It's kind of like it's it's kind of like some people might say it's crazy, but I don't think it's crazy. It's just intense. He was intense, and I tried to capture that intensity. Uh, thank you. And, that's it. Uh, this is Charlie Parker. I just wanted to pay tribute to him. I like his music a lot. And Einstein. Oh, and Einstein. Mm -hmm. Einstein. Uh, I he's he, I like him because I, well, I just like him. <laughs> he's, he's a peacemaker. He's a pacifist that had to struggle with the uh, issue of do we go ahead with making the bomb? You know, it's kind of like. Uh, very weird situation to be in. A pacifist, and yet he was very instrumental for getting the president to actually move on to the Manhattan Project. So I wanted to kind of capture that kind of uh, almost a paradox that we all have to struggle with, I guess. So. I'm, I'm interested in your state of mind when you, when you face the, uh, a blank piece of whatever that is, that big. Do you have it in your head already what's going to happen with your brush? I have a small scale of it, and that's uh -huh. why that's why I want I, I had a small scale version of it and then I said, I wanna make this big. Uh -huh. And uh, in fact, I like the small scale better, <laughs> but uh, and that's why I said this this is not thick enough. The, the original small scale was probably three times as thick as that one, but it it was sufficient for me because as it, as it is now, I in, I in fact I like the crumpledness about it. <laughs> so, and the splashing was more uh, available with a large piece than with a small piece. Because it's it's this big, right? it's like a mop, and I grabbed it and I. <laughs> <laughs> and then I have to be careful because I could rip the paper. So there's kind of like again a tension <laughs> between between the gravity and uh, you know, and I I wanted to make it as in as few strokes as possible as well. So I like the challenge more than anything. Well, and, I like the process. And then these also like do you. You practice them over and over until you get, till you get it the way you want well, this it. This one didn't have much <laughs> practice. This one, well, maybe this one I tried two or three times because I, I guess uh, I wanted it to be a bit more peaceful. <laughs> Whereas that, that was easier. I just, <laughs> I was angry and I, not always angry, but <laughs> yeah, you could splash it and. and it's that's what ink is also nice about you know that's what is nice about ink also is that it captures some of the uh, intensity that you have without even your intention of doing it. you know so when you splash it it splashed however it wanted and then you just swung it and then you you just do it 
But I have the image already in my head when I was playing. Right. Yeah. When you did those, did you do them as, like, did you say, OK, I'm going to do all of these together? Is no. They were all individual pieces. Uh, sometimes it was just exploration of color, and then it got me to different uh, places. And uh, yeah, I was telling Cynthia one of the techniques I was testing here is uh, I wanted the brush uh, character, but pastels doesn't allow brush character. So I found the uh, solution: it's to use uh, what do they call it? Pastel grounds. And so I. Use the brush on pastel grounds. It, the clear. So one. it's powder. No, no, it's a, it's a kind of made it sandpaper. Uh, uh, it's a medium with sandpaper surface. Huh. So you brush it in. And then once it's there, it's kind of no no color. And then I lay down the pastel color on top of that ground. So then now I have the uh, brush pastel. Mm -hmm. So, Tom, could you say something about um, the ink person here and the ink person down below oh. there? Yeah, okay. Um, I mean, they look, well, I mean, this one looks fairly joyful. Right. I'm not sure about this one. <laughs> <laughs> he looks uh, in trouble. A little crucified. Yeah. A little I crucified, yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know if you've seen the movie Zorba. That's the oh, title He's not really That's full of joy, cool. if you remember. Yeah. But he is trying. He's trying to live, continue his life, right. despite all the craziness. Right. Yeah. If you remember, you know, those old women just went psyched up. Anyway, I don't want to remind you. <laughs> <laughs> it was not oh, a very, very vivid movie. Yeah, it was not a very <laughs> happy story, but he, he's a survivor. So as much as he's dancing the Greek dance, the, the Zorba dance, uh, it's it's both joy and pain that's 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 working there. This, on the other hand, is an uh, image I saw on the plane uh, from back coming back from the Philippines. They have a catalog, uh, and it's a Japanese magazine. So what I saw is just these uh, young folks uh, dancing in a folk folk dance. Uh -huh. And I just love the movement because, as I was telling somebody earlier, it, it had something very natural about it. In contrast to the professional dancers where they, the way they move is almost similar to each other because they've trained so well. It, their, their language is very fixed. Whereas the guys who are practicing it has some, I, I wanted to captured that naturalness. Yeah. I, it attracted me, yeah. uh, in contrast to the more professional ones. Uh -huh. And that's why I call it dansu, because that's the Japanese version of uh, alliteration of the word dance. Yes. What about that uh, one for the, for the tree? <laughs> this one? Right. I really like it, the contrast, and I like it, the texture. It looks texture. like uh, someone has done it with a choke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So any, any more idea behind that? Uh, no, I just, uh, yeah. if, uh, I took some classes with uh, Joyce one time <laughs> and, 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 and in the summer, and uh, she was pushing me hard, and not, not put, I, I felt, <laughs> gently, I felt gently, I felt gently. <laughs> and I said, look at the trees, and, and I actually, I'm not a nature person. I, I like people more. But then she challenged me. She said, just look at nature. And then I said, OK. So I just remembered that. And I was saying, OK, uh, what, what about the trees would at least make a connection? Well, it's, it's the way they grow. They, they do grow through scars and scabs, and yet they still grow. And kind of like, don't. Don't bend just because you're scarred. Move on, <laughs> grow some branches, and, uh -huh. and so that's that's what's behind the image. Uh, I don't know if that's your question, but yeah, yeah, where it originated. Uh, more idea behind it. Yeah. It's more a representation of you know, how how we have to go on, even though we're we're scarred or something like that. The wounds. Don't lick your wounds. Yeah. 
Just, <laughs> well, don't pick up, pick up your scab. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Which I do. <laughs> it looks like a lot of your um, images and so forth and the thought process going in there, like contrasts and paradoxes. Right. And I was taken by this schizophrenia, which I guess is the ultimate. Right, <laughs> right, right. Because it's just shadow and face, you know. Right, right. And it just grabs you like that because it goes back and forth in your eyes. I know, I know. You can't fix your eyes. Yeah. And in fact, if you look very closely, I was testing it out. You tested me. Friends. I think I failed. <laughs> There's a red eye in there, and once you find the red eye, it's it's kind of focuses you there, and then again your focus goes back and forth, but you know that there's a red eye in there. Right. What does that mean? Huh? What schizophrenia? Oh, I was starting it with a red eye. Just somebody with a red eye, <laughs> angry monster kind of thing. You know, an angry person. But then uh, I then I got more confused with whether I want to just let it go or I want to build another face on top of it. And so I tried different things, brushed through it, and then painted it again and put different layers. So it was quite quite a more abstract form than I'm used to. Yeah, that's when I was just starting to so we crept experiment. Up on you? Yeah. Kinda, yeah. Wow. So maybe it's me. Maybe I'm schizophrenic. <laughs> There's something. You know. It was persistent. It was persistent. I, I didn't just throw it away, but yet I didn't accept it. And so Did there you was see struggle. it in the night? What? My the red eye. <laughs> <laughs> right, is there a diagnosis going on here? <laughs> When I was five years old, <laughs> how do you feel about it? <laughs> I don't know, it just, it just moved me to, to do it that way. And <laughs> now, don't, don't be focusing on that right now. <laughs> it's not too important. <laughs> yeah. Any other? What made you apply the texture of that um, really minuscule Sunye splatter onto the human form? Which one? Uh, both of those um, figures right there. What made you apply the texture to the human form in that way? The first one is the, the one below. Mm -hmm. uh, when I saw the uh, surface, um, I, I called it corruption, I guess, and I, that's why I did it that way because it's it's yellow. It's kind of uh, somebody who who has jaundice, <laughs> you know, really sick, uh, and yet they move on. Actually, I, I I had changed the title to be more general. At first, it was really entitled the uh, corruption of King David. Because I was listening to this song by Leonard Cohen, uh, Hallelujah, mm -hmm. in which he was remembering uh, uh, King David's corruption, uh, sending a soldier so that he can marry the wife of that soldier. Mm -hmm. And here's a king who, by all means, should have been a, had a successful king, and yet he destroyed it because of his passion and obsession. And also, I, I just put in a little bit more shape, and so the, the texture kind of matched with what I was listening to at the time. But the colors didn't come out till later. Uh, so when I, after I took the picture, the, the, the character of the ink is still there. But I, once I experimented with the color, I, I liked the yellow and the orange coming out. So the bile was moving around these things. <laughs> And the other one uh, is just uh, so it's kind of Fahrenheit. Uh, it's somebody boiling over. <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm. More anger. Actually, it grew also. It, at first, I, I entitled it uh, Sisyphus, but uh, I, I decided no, it's not quite Sisyphus. <laughs> yeah, because the boulder behind him is like uh, you know mm. the thing he was moving, but. It didn't match. It, it matched more with my, my state of mind at that time, that this guy is burning out. Yeah. 
that one is for the science oriented guys. Uh, it's Legendre's uh, sunrise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, my math students here. <laughs> it's Legendre transformation there. <laughs> Anything else? We'll let people take a look. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thanks And we'll have music. Put the music back. Okay. That was great. We're coming. Looking for the eye. Now Bill's looking for the eye. <laughs> Sometimes they say,